front tonight closer to war. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee this afternoon narrowly approved an authorization to use force against Syria. And for a second day, President Obama sent the secretaries of state and defense to Capitol Hill to make his case for war. Now, yesterday, as you know, they faced some very skeptical senators like Rand Paul. But today, the audience was even tougher. If our credibility is on the line now, as is argued, what about if Assad retaliates? Why was there no call for military response four months ago when the president's red line was crossed? This is not about getting into Syria's civil war. This is about enforcing the principle that people shouldn't be allowed to gas their citizens with impunity. And if we don't vote to do this, Assad will interpret from you that he's free to go and do this any day he wants to. Out front tonight, Jim Shudo, our chief national security correspondent who was watching it all today. And Jim, obviously, you know, there was some, some really tough questioning today. There was some progress, though, for the White House in the Senate. Very different story, though, in the House. So far from a sure thing for the president at this point, isn't it? No question. A victory for the president today, but not as convincing as he might have hoped. The vote 10 to 7 in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Only three Republicans voted for it. One of them, Senator John McCain, and two Democrats actually voted against. Another voted present. You know, it's a signal that in the GOP-controlled House, it could be an even tougher sell, which you got a sense of today in that questioning of Hagel, Kerry, and Dempsey. You heard from lawmakers who want the administration to do more that the limited strikes don't go far enough and should be about actually changing the equation on the ground between Assad and the opposition. But you also heard from those who want to do less, setting very strict limits, limits on the scope and duration of any military action, some of them in the president's own party. This is a Congress that is still very much divided, Aaron, on authorizing the use of force. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jim Shudo. And as Jim uh, indicated, uh, for very different reasons, uh, people don't want to use it. Some people don't want war at all, and some people think that the, the president should go much for much further than he's planning on going. It all comes down to Syria crossing President Obama's so-called red line. Now, speaking in Stockholm today, the president said this quote-unquote red line actually is not his red line. Hear it for yourself. I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. The world set a red line when governments representing 98 percent of the world's population said uh, the use of chemical weapons are abhorrent and passed a treaty forbidding their use even when countries are engaged in war. That's quite a change of tone, though, from this. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. And we have made clear, as the president did, I believe, from this podium, that uh, the use or proliferation of chemical weapons is a red line as far as he's concerned when it comes to the Syrian regime. The president's use of the term red line was deliberate and was based on U.S. policy. Deliberate. Okay. Now, is today just bad messaging or, or what? Out front tonight, Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, a Republican from Tennessee, and General Wesley Clark, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. Great to have both of you with us and great to have both of you here uh, with me on set. Now, General Clark, when you hear this, I mean, he's trying to say, look, it's not my red line, but he has made a very clear and consistent point that it is his red line, that this is a, something he is passionate about, that he believes in. Why is he doing this now and saying, it's not mine, it's everybody else's? Because I think if the United States is going to lead this is the time to lead and what the president's doing is leading everyone signed this chemical warfare convention it outlaws the use of chemical weapons mm -hmm. uh, it's actually been in law since 1925 and uh, this is a chance for the united states and the world community to show that we meant the piece of paper when we signed it and that's what this is about u.s leadership it's not about the strike the strike is just the point at the end of the period. This is about bringing the United States hmm. and the world together to make a statement. This is not going to be permitted in the 21st century. And, and Representative Blackburn, I mean, doesn't the general have a point? I mean, that yes, the president has said this is his red line, but, uh, you know, Syria is one of just a few nations in the world that has not agreed to a treaty prohibiting the use of chemical weapons. This is something he's trying to remind the world that the world has said is an unacceptable violation of human rights. So isn't he right to say this is the world's red line? This was a treaty, yes, it goes back uh, decades, and there, there has been agreement on that, but 
I would disagree. I think that the president has shown a lack of leadership in this situation. It is one of those things where he's been inconsistent in his approach. And when I talk to the men and women in my district who are military retirees, who are active duty and are there at Fort Campbell, they I think are getting mixed messages. A president, a commander in chief, must be able to clearly assess a situation, define a mission, give that strategy, and say this is what the exit is going to be. And this president has not done that. Well, General Clark, that, that is a fair point in the sense oh, of I, don't I mean think the, it's fair. All right, what? so explain explain to me though though very, what is strange. the what is the exit? Because even yesterday John Kerry you said, Well, there's no boots the on the ground, and then he said, Well, I'm not comfortable you, taking you boots finish, on the ground off the table. You finish the strikes. It's three, four, five days. It's a package. We did this against Saddam Hussein in 1998 when he wouldn't allow the UN uh, Special Commission inspectors in. This is nothing new. We've done this. The point is that when President Clinton did it then, he did it. There wasn't a big debate about it or anything, and it was over. Here, the point is not the strikes. We're not going to intervene in that civil war at this point. There's no political opposition to really reinforce. We're miles away from that. So you think we that. can keep this this put in a little box? This is I what it's going to be. I think there's two different issues, and it's not going to leak. Well, there's two different issues. I think that if we are, first of all, we have to draw a line against the use of chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. That may weaken the Assad regime. It may not. We're also providing some aid to the rebels right. because if we're going to move toward a political resolution, mm -hmm. there has to be enough balance between the two sides to encourage Assad to come to the table and negotiate. Right now, he doesn't have to. All he has to do is wait it out and wait for right. the opposition to fall well, apart. No, but with the rebels, mm -hmm. we know that they have been infiltrated by Al Qaeda. We know that uh, there are many that would Up say to they're 15 more. 15 percent of the rebels right. could be quote unquote. Al-Qaeda or That's others, right. said That's Secretary right. Kerry today. So they're not all necessarily friendly to us. A lot of them could be termed almost as bandits, as someone uh, referenced it to me. We also have a mm -hmm. situation where this president, you hand him the ball on foreign policy and he seems to fumble it, whether it's the drawdown in Iraq or what happened in Afghanistan with the surge or Libya or Egypt. And people are saying, wait a minute. We seem to have a problem with understanding what is to be the goal and how we're to approach these. Mm -hmm. I think that the president didn't want the responsibility on his shoulders, so therefore, if what he decided to do... Just to put it on, on Congress. That's right. Now, John McCain has said that a no vote from Congress would, even though the president might be able to go ahead with it anyway, would damage the office of the presidency, that it would be catastrophic. Uh, you know, you've got John Boehner saying vote yes. You've got Eric Cantor saying vote yes. You've been leaning no. That's correct. I am a lean no. You're a lean no. But do those arguments sway you? That this is about more than this president. This is about the office of presidency of the United States. It is about the office of the presidency, and it's about our nation's response and how we go about through that decision making process, how we approach this, what has happened in Syria, whether it was Assad or the rebels, is it is immoral. And yes, we all agree on that. But I tell you what else is immoral <laughs> is looking at the U.S. military and this administration requiring them to do more with less resources, whether it comes from the drawdown in Iraq or the surge in Afghanistan. They're cutting the money and the resources to the military and putting more on them, the pivot to Asia and what is uh, taking place okay. there. I think we have to be careful about Sorry. partisanship and morality when we're talking about deciding on U.S. foreign policy. Mm -hmm. So I want to take this out of the partisan mode. President Bush bears the responsibility for unleashing the, the democracy genie in the Middle East. He mm -hmm. and Condoleezza Rice pushed this when he couldn't find and weapons sadly, of mass destruction. And you can't put that genie back you in a bottle. You can't put it back in. Yeah. It's been used. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at where we are right now. We've got a very important principle at stake here. And I think that if you go back and look at it through a partisan lens, you see consistency in the Republican Party going back 90 years to the Republican Party's refusal to ratify the League of Nations, mm -hmm. the efforts after uh, World War II of isolationism of the Republican Party, it's a consistent theme that the country has struggled against. We're the leader of the world. This world community was built by the United States after World War II. Okay. It's in our interest to keep it going. And part of that is not allowing the use of chemical weapons. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much to both of you. We appreciate your time tonight.